This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, we're taking a look back at some of the most cursed weapons to have broken poor Jonathan's brain across 2023 that almost looks like it's powering the laser on the side, but why would it need to be grafted into the receiver right where the... Ah, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Jonathan and the whole team here at GameSpot just want to say thank you to everyone who supported and watched the show over the last year. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to check out our new series of Loadout, a show where we take a look at the history and impact of some of the most iconic weapons in gaming, from the MP5 and how games get submachine guns wrong, through to the AWP and RPG-7. Jonathan will be making plenty of appearances over on that show too, so make sure to check that out. Right, let's take a look at some of the most cursed weapons of 2023. Oh, hang on, hold the phone. On the first view, this looked like, like M4 with some dress up parts on it, like the Tomorrow War with its Hera Arms furniture and some optics and stuff that make it look like it's from the future. But actually, this is quite different. We've got some weird stuff going on at the back here where there's a sort of bolt reciprocating that's open to the air and I don't understand what's happening. This is blowing my tiny mind because it has a lot of M4 or a AR-15 detail, like the, the castle nut here that holds the, the, the buffer tube to the upper receiver, sorry, to the lower receiver. Lots and lots of bits of, of, of AR are in this, but then mechanically they've completely changed how the gun works and I don't think it's plausible. Correction, I know it's not plausible. This is interfering with how the upper and lower fit together even, um, but even regardless of that, there's a bolt or bolt carrier or whatever it's supposed to be positioned all the way back here and then reciprocating. So it's, it's, it's doing its reciprocating where the rounds aren't. So it's not able to feed any rounds into the, into the chamber. The chamber based on where that bolt face is or the face of the bolt carrier would have to be back here meaning that the barrel comes all the way back into the receiver, which just completely breaks the design. There's also a weird pipe tube thing coming out of the upper receiver here and forward into the handguard that almost looks like it's powering the laser on the side, but why would it need to be grafted into the receiver right where the... Ah, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. This one is confusing me quite a bit. I'd go so far as to say this is a cursed gun. Oh no. That's it. Okay. Right. Well, heresy. More MP5 heresy. Clutch this what this real one tight as I uh process the pump action mp5 now uh, this is going to cause i suspect this is going to precipitate some comments of a certain nature regardless of what i say about it so on the one hand it's quite clever there's no reason why it wouldn't work and if you're going to do it you probably want to make a pump grip out of the handguard from the mp5 sd i don't know uh, maybe a cut down i God, I can't believe I'm thinking about how to do this, but probably the MP5K vertical foregrip handguard would make the most sense for a pump action MP5. I don't know. Just not the same, is it? I actually want to read you the database entry for this because I think it'll Please do a better do. job than I could at contextualizing it. So it's called the Budget Arms Slaughtermatic. Night citizens disagree on a lot, but there's one common platform that they share. A gun should be available for everyone, no matter the thickness of their wallet, their age, their criminal history, the time of day, and most importantly, no questions asked. You can buy this single-use pistol from most vending machines for a price not much higher than a can of Ni Cola. At first <laughs> glance, you can clearly see why. It's made from the cheapest plastic liable to not only mel melt if left out in the sun, but also prone to jamming, breaking, and snapping inexperienced wrists with its high recoil. Still, a gun's primary purpose is to kill, and that's what it does. But when you fired the last round, don't bother reloading. Just toss it in the trash and buy a new one. Interesting. So there's been some sort of radical shift in uh, in firearms attitudes and legislation, I would suggest. Disposable pistol? Well, we know about at least one disposable pistol, the, the Liberator of World War II. Not single use, though. So the, the, the Liberator was intended for as many shots as you could get out of it before it blew up or fell apart and came with, I think, two spare rounds in the 
in its own grip. Plastic? Well, yes, we can make guns out of plastic. There's no real reason why it should be so fragile unless it has no steel barrel or titanium or whatever metal barrel and bolt or breech, which it probably ought to have. But so this is what's, this is what's conflicting me is on the one hand, it's either it's super duper space polymer and in which case the barrel and bolt are somehow made out of plastic and should be robust enough for multiple shots. Or it's cheap crap plastic like they say it is, in which case, why isn't it blowing up with at the first shot or the only shot but as a concept it's pretty funny and quite clever so i'm jumping the gun literally insofar as single use means whatever rounds are in the gun and then it's empty it doesn't of course mean a single shot as the liberator was a single shot so this is a very slow machine pistol or just a self-loading pistol with a sort of uzi style cocking handle on the top um and i guess it says do not reload because you could easily hold back the, the cocking handle and sh shove in another round they must have calculated the stresses and everything on this to the point where it shouldn't blow up for the number of rounds that are in the gun i guess is to the idea here. What does that label say? Oh, here we go. Warning, do not disassemble, do not dispose in fire, do not attempt to reload. Warranty valid for 20 rounds of preloaded ammunition. I'm not it sure why there's- with 32 rounds, so you void your own warranty. Part Amazing. Part I, was about, it. I was about to ask you the same thing because I hadn't been paying attention enough to realize that. So that explains the accounts of them blowing up because you're only covered if you fire 20 shots and since it's automatic you'd have to be pretty good to count how many rounds it is before you're then into the danger zone of the disclaimer <laughs> i wonder how that disclaimer stands up in court i'm looking at a derringer so this is the remington double jet a derringer much copied and, and reproduced later in a range of different calibers and changes to the design. This is an original from about the turn of the, of the 19th, 20th century. Looks looks reasonably modeled. The, the barrel lever, barrel catch is this. Flip it forwards and you can flip it up. Eject your empties with this sliding catch. Insert two more rounds, close it up. Flick the lever back. This is not for quick reloading. This is for two shots and get the heck out of there. The pink though, the pink is why I'm despairing slightly. There is a, a very tired trope in the gun industry that women should have A, tiny firearms, which is not by no means always the case because they, they all have tiny hands. Uh, they obviously don't all have tiny hands. Um, and pink guns, because obviously all women love pink, don't they? So there is a move, strong move away from that in the firearms industry toward whatever the, the customers actually want. And it isn't just husbands buying things for their wives. Women actually do want and need and buy firearms in different parts of the world as well. Now that's not to say that you wouldn't find a pink Derringer because some people do like pink and I would probably roll my eyes but I'd still use it anyway because you've still got to survive after all. So if you if you were to just throw this like you um so you open it up empty out the cartridges. I don't think you're really using the extractor either. Shove in two more and just flick it forwards like that and shoot it. What's going to happen is it's going to blow up, essentially. Uh, maybe not blow up, blow up, but the barrel will flip up. The case will rupture, most likely, and you may well damage the gun. So you, you that quick reload, at least with the classic type of, of Remington Double Derringer, is that you have to make damn sure that that latch is in the rear, rear position. No, stop, no, 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 stop. <laughs> Man. Right, a couple of things. <laughs> Clearly, these weapons are even more customizable than I thought they were because we've got uh, what appears to be a middle finger front sight and uh, just, just fingers and hands. And I, I haven't even seen someone do that on a real firearm. That's special. I, I hope that the game overall maintains the sort of serious tone with the sit with the sort of cutesy graphics because that works well. Um, too much of this kind of thing might take me out of it, but that was funny. Now, also in the set, as I'm trying, I'm trying very hard to focus on 
an on-screen indicator that says combining magazines that I don't think I've seen before. So we've got realistic ammunition management. We might have one round in one magazine, five in another. You can combine, pretty desperate if you did this, but you can combine the one round magazine into the five round magazine and get one magazine of six rounds, which is going to give you ever so slight edge in an encounter. Can you do it this quickly? Obviously not. You'd have to take cover, be pretty assured you're not going to get overrun and shot, um, and then look at removing rounds from magazines, stowing them or throwing them away, and inserting them into your other magazines. It would be a much longer, more involved process, but very interesting that it's in the game. I'm, a, I'm kind of astonished that a mechanic I've never seen before is debuting, for me anyway, in this particular game. Again, not to disparage the game. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Oh, the tense. It's tense. Okay, that's... Yeah, I didn't pick up our um, inert Bison submachine gun, and I, for its sake, I'm quite glad because this thing is horrifying. I kind of appreciate the cat motif in principle, but the purple highlights and the terrified looking cartoon cat are really not my style. But it's a bit of fun. <laughs> Some interesting lighting effects going on with the the muzzle flashes playing along the top of the tube of the magazine, which is a little... I think that's probably right. <laughs> I think it would depend on the ambient lighting as to whether you'd see it as much as we're seeing it here. But there's attention to detail there that that, that muzzle flash that happens at the front of the gun is... because it's able to, effectively, coming back along the top surface of the magazine either side. Bison is a... Good choice for the game in, in many ways. It's, it's really designed for this kind of role, or was, security services rather than military. The Russians have moved over to a much more MP5 configuration with the PP-19. Same name, different, uh, Vichaz, um, with a conventional box magazine, suggesting that the helical magazine was problematic for them. We have a 1911, sort of. The slide looks absolutely spot on. The safety, the hammer, the takedown lever slash slide stop lever, grip frame, the, the nearly everything is 1911, but we have a really bizarre trigger guard frame shape with that curvature and a huge tall trigger as a result of that. And I don't know why they've done that. There, there is definitely no legal reason for them to have changed that design. And as it says, it's a modified old earth pistol and it clearly is meant to be a 1911 i don't know why you wouldn't just stick to it being a 1911 it's even 45 caliber i have no idea why you'd want to use this so far in the future because although we're still making 1911 pattern pistols today can't imagine we will be then and we have caseless future ammo that's way more way more effective this is a real antique and again it's, it's, re it's really bugging me as to why they've changed the design There is a practical reason why you would not want to take a vintage, conventional, Earth-designed firearm into space, or certainly into a vacuum, and that is vacuum welding. Into certain alloys, I think mainly similar, or nearly always similar alloys of metal, will, in the absence of oxygen and oxidation, more importantly, will stick together, bond together, weld together. And that is going to take place where that oxidized layer that's on every metal thing. Now we deliberately oxidize and we'd coat metal parts to prevent corrosion, usually. Uh, in this case, we'd also be trying to prevent this stiction effect. But that finish wears on the high points, on the contact points, so you could find that your sear is welded to the nose of your hammer and, and it won't shoot. You might get enough drag on the slide from the worn parts of the slide contacting the worn parts of the frame that you get a failure to extract or a failure to feed. You know, if you were to take up a brand new 1911, there would be X many rounds before you experience any of these issues as the oxidation layer wears away. And if you put the gun in an atmosphere and let it oxidize the surfaces again and then put it back together and took it out and used it again, it would be fine. But 
it's still a consideration in a way that a firearm designed for use in all environments, which all of the others would have to be designed for, just wouldn't have. And I cannot see you ever falling back on a gun that might jam because it's not designed for space. What is this? Dave, seriously, what is this? I couldn't do an episode without a few cursed entries. This one appears to be literally cursed. It's sort of steaming. It's one of the new cosmetic things that Modern Warfare 3 is doing where the more kills you get with a gun, the grosser it becomes. You know how a big heap of dung in a field in winter steams? That. What else can I say about this thing? Well, um, the, the beta style C mag, you know, completely impractical. Uh, looks cool. Well, I say completely impractical. Uh, various people, including the British, have experimented with those massive 100 round saddle type mags. Of course, there's you know, precedent in World War II for the, for the German equivalent. Uh, they're not entirely impractical, but they would be a way to make uh, a machine gun more portable. You're not, not something you want to stick on the bottom of a rifle as here. But that's the least of that gun's problems. So it looks like, I was thinking maybe all the guns in the game were real and then fantasy modified, but we've got a fantasy gun here called a Nightfall. Let's have a look. It looks a bit bony and HR Geegery. I wanted to include this one because it made me very uncomfortable to look at, especially with the reload animation. Oh no, oh I know where this is going. Oh, lots of fingers. <laughs> uh. They twitch every time they fire. It's so messed up, I hate it. <laughs> Is there any in-universe explanation for the horrific talon fingers? Well, the, the, the weapon description is quite um, flavorful. Its skin undulates as though invisible creatures skittered underneath, sliding against your palms and tasting, just tasting your flesh. The back of your neck tingles every time you touch it. If you could hold a nightmare in your hands, you're certain this is what it would feel like. A device forged of pure evil fires hardened bone shards at a brisk rate. Bone shards? Well, I suppose it's firing them with magic, I guess. Just makes me think it's shooting fingernails. Oh God, <laughs> now you've made it worse. This, this is a piece of design where no one was there to say no. There's that sort of iridescence again. Got a cool graphical effect, but um, again, it looks like sort of a SpongeBob SquarePants grenade launcher. No, it's not, no, it's not quite sort of underwater. It's something something else. Yeah, 38. Cosmic minutes. Horror Milkor. Cosmic Horror Milkor. You see, you're, you're better at this than me. <laughs> I suppose it makes sense, doesn't it? The deep space monstrous stuff. Well, even, even the sound effect of this one sounds like wet and like unpleasant yeah it's like you just kicked a bucket of calamari down the stairs <laughs> you really are knocking it out of the park today <laughs> <laughs> don't try that at home kids please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel as we'll have new episodes of firearms expert reacts every saturday and new episodes of loadout every sunday of course, check out the links in the description of this video if you want to help support the Royal Armouries, and we'll catch you next time.